Many of you may have received a pamphlet at the mall asking you to register as an organ donor. However, most people don't know much about what organ donation is and end up throwing out the pamphlet. So what is organ donation? Organ donation involves a transplant, a type of surgery where an organ is removed from the donor and given to the recipient to replace the recipient's damaged organ. The donor often registers for organ donation during their lifetime, and in most cases, once the donor passes away, the organ transplant takes place. Many different types of organs such as the liver, kidney, heart, pancreas, and lung can be transplanted. However, in Ontario, as per data collected, the second highest in-demand organ for transplant is the liver. Hence, throughout this video, we will focus on the procedures involved in liver transplants. More specifically, we will be looking at the sign-up procedure, the organ life cycle, the process of finding a match, and life post-transplantation. Let's start with the sign-up procedure. Individuals can sign up for post-death organ donations through various methods, such as in-person, through mail, or even online through the ministry's website. Current guidelines of the Trillium Gift of Life Network requires that an individual's consent to donate their organs be reaffirmed with the family, in case the donor subsequently withdrew their consent after registration. In most cases, the donor's wishes are honored by the family, but in some cases, the family may be unaware of the donor's decision. As the overall legal decision of donating lies with the family, it is important to communicate with them in advance about your decision to donate after you pass away. Given the tight time limitations for successful organ transplants, advanced communication with families will avoid unnecessary delays and confusion in an already stressful environment. For more information regarding the enrollment process, check out the beadonor.ca website. Moving on to the organ life cycle. Because organs require a constant supply of oxygenated blood for sustainability, most donations happen following brain death, where the heart is still pumping blood, but the individual has lost all brain function and is put on life support. The current updated national guidelines for declaring someone brain dead is when the lower part of the brain, involved with breathing, wakefulness, and other autonomic functions is permanently non-functional. In recent years, there has also been an increase in organ transplant following cardiac death, where the patient's death is attributed to the loss of heart function. Let's move on to finding a match. We must keep in mind that not every organ donor is a match for a recipient. To understand this better, we will look at NAMELD. NAMELD stands for the Sodium Model for End-Stage Liver Disease and it's a ranking system to determine which patient may get an available liver. The purpose of the NAMELD is to reduce the number of deaths while people are waiting for an organ, to provide equal access to liver transplants for everyone in Ontario, and to ensure that each donated organ is fully utilized. NAMELD uses a scale ranking people between 11 and 44 depending on the level of urgency for a transplant, with 11 being low and 44 being high. Although, those deemed unable to survive for the next 7 days without a new liver are given priority over everyone else. So, in order to determine the correct NAMELD number, patients are given a blood test which determine various factors all of which give some indication to the severity of the disease, allowing doctors to assign each patient a number. These readings are taken every month in order to accurately depict the situation of each patient. Now what if after all this, two patients have the same NAMELD scores and blood type when a liver becomes available? The patient that's been waiting longer will receive the liver. Also, if patients are within four points of each other when a liver becomes available, geography will contribute to the decision. Now let's talk about life post-transplantation. Organ transplantation recipients follow a regimen to ensure that life with their new organ will go as smoothly as possible. We'll look at four post-operative aspects including checkups, medications, possible complications, and lifestyle changes. After their procedure, patients are given a date for a checkup with their doctor, usually within a week after discharge. These appointments continue every one to two weeks, becoming less frequent as patient health stabilizes over time. Post-operation, patients take medications to prevent rejections and to manage other health issues. While in the hospital, patients are given medications to be taken at given intervals. When discharged, they are given prescriptions for all the medicine they will need. Patients do have to consult their doctor before ingesting any drugs after treatment, including painkillers, herbal remedies, or antibiotics. 
As for complications, most are visible right after the surgery, but some follow after discharge from the hospital. Possible complications are fevers, coughs, jaundice, or shortness of breath. Most lifestyle changes are temporary, but can last up to six months. A healthy diet must be consumed and strenuous exercise is prohibited after surgery. Employment that requires lifting or strenuous exertion requires about 12 weeks off. Thank you very much for watching this video, where we took a look at the basics of organ donation, such as the sign-up procedure, the organ life cycle, finding a match, and life post-transplantation, as they all play critical roles in understanding how the process works. For more insight on organ transplantation, check out the links at the end of this video and subscribe to Demystifying Medicine for future bite-sized medicinal information.